My name is Dave Camarillo. Uh, I've coached uh, guys like Daniel Cormier, Cain Velasquez, John Fitch. In my career, I am a black belt in judo, black belt in jiu-jitsu. Fight game, I think the fight game is a lifestyle where crazy people wake up, they are energized to smash the day, but instead of taking their frustrations of their normal normalcy out on everyone else, they do it in a very controlled environment where they get to punch people and choke them. It's awesome. My name is Tim Kennedy. I fought for everybody. I fought for the UFC, I fought for Strike Force, I fought for the IFL, I fought for the WC. Started fighting. Uh, there was not really, well, there were no athletic commissions that governed MMA. So I was fighting on Indian reservations, I was fighting in Tijuana, I was fighting on St. Augustine Island in the bars of New Orleans. Um, it was just like rope rings, cardboard floors, and uh, couple of dudes that wanted to make a buck. Uh, when I first started coaching fighters uh, back in the WEC uh, days, they would pull guys who were like three drinks deep sometimes into the cage. Uh, very unsanctioned. We do a lot of uh, fights on that reservations, the Indian reservations. Uh, and then it slowly started culminating into like UFC gaining ground. And then they started outlawing a lot of that. Got very well sanctioned. Uh, a lot of, I think, attention to detail in terms of developing good referees to keep the fighters safe at the same time to elevate the sport in general. They got into the sport because I opened a gym here locally and I told them, I said, hey, I'm going to have you guys start training for self-defense reasons. Um, but I had never, they didn't train growing up, they didn't train as little kids. And I was busy fighting and I didn't push them. You know, my, my younger one raced, raced motocross and uh, they just weren't into it. Not just the cool dad that shows up for like career day as a kid, you know, and everyone's like, I'm a doctor, I'm a cop. He's like, I beat up those people. <laughs> so it was, it was definitely different back then. Uh, but now since he's my coach, uh, it's a little, I guess a little more helpful uh, for me getting into the same sport, same line of work, I guess. So as soon as I started, it had been, I, I told him I needed to train twice a week. And then within a month, they were training three or four days a week. And then within two months, they were training every day. Tyler, uh, super athletic, um, he wanted to compete. So the first tournament, Lucas didn't want to compete. So the first tournament, Tyler competes and he wins. And we're in the car on the way home and Lucas says, wins the next tournament. And I said, why? He goes, I'll do it. So he competes and, and he wins. I think he won one, lost one. He was not athletic. He was a little squishy kid, um, books, internet, games, animals, art, you know, he was not athletic. I knew at the time when I was younger that he fought, but I also didn't really know what that entailed because I didn't train, so I just like, I was just aware that he fought when we weren't around. And so once I actually started training, um, he made sure to fight two more times at the same location that I just fought at for my debut. And so then it was a little, it was a little different. And so I definitely have uh, good memories of him fighting then just because I know he made sure he wanted to see, for us to see him fight. Cause I never saw him fight before that. I never saw him fight um, until I was like 12. I just knew that he did. And so it was a little different. It was cool. It was cool. And he started training. Uh, he has a work ethic like nobody's I've ever seen in my life. Um, nobody's. Nobody's I've ever trained. Going into his senior year, he, we had talked about it. And he had colleges that wanted him to wrestle. Um, we had talked about if he would want to be a fighter, um, if he would not want to do any of it and just do jiu-jitsu. Two-ish years, and we just kind of kept it as just, you know, playing jiu-jitsu, we trained, competed. And then we kind of started throwing in wrestling, which is a little more intense, and it's a little more testing of your actual mental uh, stability, I think. Um, and we wrestled for more, and then we started mixing in boxing, we started doing everything. And I kind of realized while I was doing everything that I really enjoyed doing everything. And so it was a little, I didn't know, you know, there was not a certain point in time, I guess, that I knew that I wanted to fight, but it was definitely progressively over time as I realized I was pretty decent at blending all of it together. And that I was pretty, I was pretty decent at it. Um, I was training with our fight team 
when I was like 13, 14, just, just for the hell of it, just for the experience of it. And I was like, oh, I was like, you know, some of these guys are like twice my age and you know, I'm throwing them on their head. I was like, okay. I was like, and so I guess, I guess it was over time. Over time, I definitely realized I wanted to do this. And, and so we said, okay, how about this? Let's fight one time. You may win and never want to do it again, or you may lose and want to do it again, but let's, let's just find out right now, and that way we know what your avenue is when, when school gets out. So I think a week before his senior year started, he, uh, we took a fight at XKO. He was 17 years old. Texas is the only state that would, would you know, they allow that, and they, they, uh, we had to get notarizations and stuff from me and his mom. I had some sort of expectation of how I'd feel, just because I'd, at the time, I think I'd already done a little over 300, 400 uh, matches of jiu-jitsu and wrestling and whatnot. And so like the nerves, I don't think get any better. Honestly, I think they suck all the way through, but that it would probably still suck, but that it'd be fine. I was definitely way more nervous for fighting. It was just a different experience altogether for me. Um, but you know, it was, it was, it was pretty good. I, my first fight was pretty good. I only got hit like once or twice. And I was like, okay, this is fine. And then the next fight was a lot more, but that's still okay. <laughs> and he fought a 26 year old guy and he beat him and he was hooked. And so he fought again right after school got out. And then from that point on, he's just uh, worked so hard and he only had three amateur fights and then he just made his pro debut this weekend uh, in Bellator and won that as well. One guy, Jeremy Horn, is the other, only other person I've ever cornered that is like Lucas in between rounds where he he talks to me like he's had a hundred fights he sits down and has a conversation like i'm having with you right now um not like he just fought for five minutes with somebody and he has to go back out and fight him again he's like you know um i, I didn't see i don't remember getting hit because i can see it out of the corner of my eye and he's just kind of talking and having a conversation and uh that's something that you i, I never felt that way in 36 pro fights um it's something you can't train or teach, I don't think. He didn't come up the same as me. I had hundreds of street fights. He had zero, you know? So he is just very good at the sport. Um, he's tough as shit and he's mentally strong and, and he's, got, he's got no quit. You know, that's one thing I said before he even fought his first fight is he's such a grinder and he's so tough and so mentally, you know, there's no quit in him that at some point I'm gonna have to be his dad sitting in the corner on the losing end of something, watching him not quit. Uh, my name's Travis Davis. I'm 7-3 as a pro MMA fighter out of Upper Sandusky, Ohio. Originally living in Columbus, Ohio, training for Ronin Training Center. What do you like growing up? A uh, bit of a hellraiser. Uh, you know, I, I had a younger brother that was a year younger than me, so we, uh, we got in a lot of trouble and did the crazy things. But, uh, I mean, we, we were, you know, we were kids, so small town living. When did you discover MMA? Uh, I, I originally discovered MMA, actually the first UFC pay-per-view I watched was uh, Chuck Liddell versus uh, Rampage Jackson. And um, I was getting ready to leave for the Marine Corps when uh, I saw that and then I immediately started, once we started in the Marine Corps uh, Mixed Martial Arts program, that's when I got into MMA and started uh, training. Uh, yeah, I grew up in Upper Sandusky, Ohio. It's a small, uh, mostly agricultural town. Um, you know, it's industry, entrepreneurship. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot of options for me. Um, I dropped out of college. Uh, I was getting in a lot of trouble, um, and you know my uh, sister passed away um, when I was 19. Uh, our house burned down, and she passed away. And that was kind of like, uh, in a way, it was kind of a, an awakening for me to you know realize that life's too short to sit on my hands and not do anything so um, you know one of my buddies came to me with an idea of joining the Coast Guard uh, and eventually he ended up leaving for the Coast Guard and I didn't get in uh, so I went to some other branches and chose the Marine Corps and uh, I had my I had a Muay Thai fight while I was there uh, I was out drinking with some buddies they talked me into getting in the ring and I fought a Muay Thai guy who was like half my size but uh, uh, he still broke my nose and gave me a black eye. Luckily, I, I won the match only because uh, every time I'd hit him, he pretty much would fall to the ground. I mean, I had like 60 pounds or 80 pounds on the guy. Uh, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, uh, I think, were we in Patia or, I, I'm not sure if I pronounced it right, but uh, um, I mean, they have this place called Walking Street and it's, I mean, everything you can think of that you see in movies and stuff is, it's, it's real, you know, it's there. And, uh, you know, they have, uh, they have, um, docks with uh, Muay Thai rings on there, uh, boxing rings, and they just do Muay Thai fights all day long. 
and uh, you can pay $20 and uh, you can find a Muay Thai fighter. Uh, I had to quit fighting for a while, uh, a year and a half I quit twice. Uh, because my business started growing and I was being a realist at the time and was like, you know, this is where my real money's coming from, which um, I grew my business uh, very successfully, got a house, got a car, all that stuff that, you know, um, I wouldn't have been able to do fighting, uh, at least not getting started out. Um, and, uh, you know, it definitely takes away from your social life. I have a lot of friends that I don't really hang out with as much. Um, you know, a lot of people like to go out, have drinks and stuff like that. When you're cutting weight and, and fighting and training as often as, as you know, an active fighter is, um, you don't have time for that stuff, you know. Uh, I just, I, and I don't make time for it. I make time to work, to train, hang out with my girlfriend and my dogs, and then it's the, you know, rinse and repeat process. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's taken a lot from me, but it, it's given me so much more. Lou Armazani, uh, professional MMA record, uh, three wins, two losses. Retired since 2009. When I was younger, when I heard that question, what do I want to be when I grow up? I never knew the answer. I just knew that I didn't really want to have to work every day. I never actually wanted to fight MMA. I only uh, wanted to train jujitsu and compete jujitsu. Um, but I was 20, 23 years old, I think, 24 years old. I was training jujitsu for a couple years and I had a phone call and my friend was like, hey, uh, my buddy's a promoter down in Virginia, and he had some guy drop off his fight card. I think you'd be a good fit. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Doubt. And there's always like the what ifs. Like your brain's always gonna play the devil's advocate when it comes down to the, the, the competition and your opponent. So for me, it was, it was just a, it was a, a very disciplined structure of intense workouts, both conditioning, <clears throat> excuse me, conditioning, uh, you know, sparring, grappling, just like the hardest that I can go because that's actually, in my opinion, how you build that confidence to where you're confident about the outcome of the fight. You're not, you know, apprehensive like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. What if he does this? What if he does that? It's more like, well, I've done that 5,000 times in this camp. I know I'm going to take that down. I've been there, man. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very humbling experience because it sucks and it is what it is, but definitely been there where you know you see your fighter losing and you you see it that it's just not gonna happen like they're not gonna pull the win out it's gonna be like a Hail Mary attempt if they can but it's it's not fun Ash Robinson my fight name is short stack my professional record is 12 and 12 and my amateur record was 15 and 3 I first discovered MMA in about 2005 I was just watching it with friends um, and then I decided I wanted to try it. So I got online and I basically just Googled MMA fights and I found one and I got set up for it. And the story after that is I actually found a gym, started training. That fight ended up getting canceled because they had me set up to fight a Penn State wrestler and my wrestling was not at the level to be able to fight that one yet. So I ended up fighting my first fight in a barn, in a canvas boxing ring, and I was warming up with hay on the ground. <laughs> what? To win a fight, to me, has always been something that's a different feeling depending on the level of the fight it is. It's always been something where if it's a fight you're supposed to win and you win, it's kind of like, ah, oh, it was supposed to happen. But if it's one of those, I have nothing to lose fights, it's one of the best feelings in the world. And then talk to me about the flip side. Talk to me what the feeling is of losing an MMA fight. When you lose a fight, it's, it's the same in reverse, depending on the fight. If you have nothing to lose and you lose the fight, you just hope that you learned something in it and you didn't just go out there and lose quickly. Um, but then there are those fights that you're supposed to win that maybe you hadn't trained enough for or you took on short notice and you just weren't 100% ready. And those fights are the, are the worst to lose because this, a lot of people say it in the sport, the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, and those ones will get you really low. The, you get real depressed after those and you really question not only if you want to fight again, but a lot of other things in life. I realized like this sport is no joke. It'll chew you up, spit you out, and walk away and chew up the next person because that's, that's what it does. We're in an entertainment business and any professional sport is that way. 
they're going to use you as long as your body allows them to use you. They're going to give you what they can and what you ask for while they're doing it. But when it's all said and done, you're, you're just like a tornado that has come and passed. Nobody even cares anymore. The fight game, it is not fair. It is what it is. It's politics. Um, we train in Fuquay, North Carolina. Anyone coming out of here and going to the UFC is going to be phenomenal if we can make it that far. Um, you got to have the names behind you. You have to have top management behind you that you can trust. You have to have a whole lot in place to be able to just to be able to get your shot to show that you deserve to be there. And then you have to win that shot. You have to win that shot, not in a boring fashion, but you have to win it pretty much dramatically because nobody want, the UFC doesn't want to employ people that are boring fighters. That's why it took Ben Askren so long to get in the UFC. You know what I mean? Finally, all the talk got him there. I actually don't think he'll stay there, but that's me and he can probably beat me up when he takes me down and whatever. <laughs> um, as far as uh, the fight game and like a deal with the devil, it is. You have to, you heal your body every single time you, you hurt it here. But later in life, those, that healing isn't gonna happen. You're gonna need to get it fixed. And then eventually one of, one of your injuries is gonna take you out. That's just how it is. You have, to, you have to know that going into fighting. Eventually you're gonna get injured to the point that you can't do it anymore. 